Hello friends, uh, so in the previous lecture we discussed about equilibrium and non-equilibrium cooling in, uh, in a system and we took uh, isomorphous system as an example. Now uh, moving forward, we now want to see the again the microstructural development in, uh, in a different system, okay. just to try to understand that in different systems what will happen if you do cooling and you ha have this phase transformation, what type of microstructures will be there. In isomorphous, isomorphous system it is very simple, you will have liquid phase, then liquid plus solid and the solid phase. So, only one phase will be there uh, for all the compositions, but for different systems uh, you will see that now there is a large difference in the what type of microstructure will develop for different compositions. So, uh, now we will take an example of a eutectic system, we have already seen a eutectic system and uh, not to complicate it the, the, the concept too much right now, we will consider equilibrium cooling of a eutectic system that what will happen if I do equilibrium cooling, what type of microstructure will be there or what type of phases I will see. In a, in a microstructure at different compositions, okay, that is the idea. Okay, so, in this we will consider three cases, case 1 is composition less than the maximum solubility of A in alpha phase, okay, that whatever is the maximum solubility uh, composition should be less than the maximum solubility of, actually it should be B here, so I am cutting this maximum solubility of B in alpha phase, okay. then composition between maximum solubility of A in alpha phase and eutectic composition. Okay. So, again I will take A out of here and make it B, okay. maximum solubility of B in alpha phase and eutectic composition and case third is your eutectic composition. Okay, so, we will consider these three cases here uh, and try to understand that what type of microstructures will be there okay, when, when I have all these uh, variations. Okay. So, case 1, okay, uh, this is my if you see this is again our eutectic phase diagram. So, you have melting point of A here, you have melting point of B here. Okay, you have a eutectic point he here where liquid is transforming into alpha and beta phases. You have alpha phase here, you have beta phase here and you have a alpha plus beta phase region here. Okay. In between as I told you earlier also between any two phase you should have a two phase mixture. So, between alpha and liquid you will have alpha plus liquid, between beta and liquid you will have beta plus liquid. Okay, so, this is your whole uh, overall eutectic phase diagram and the eutectic reaction takes place here. So, I will write E here uh, to signify that this is a eutectic point. So, now we will see the composition less than the maximum solubility of again I will say this is B in alpha phase and that is the point which is this one. Okay, this is my maximum solubility of B in alpha phase. Okay. So, alpha phase is the phase okay, which, so which is a solute solution of B in A. So, my B is, is solute and A is solvent. Okay. So, this is my alpha phase. So, alpha phase is a solute solution of B in A. Okay. B atoms are in A, A is A atoms are more, B atoms are less. So, A atom is a solvent, B atom is a solute. Okay. So, alpha phase. So, when we say phase means it is not a pure uh, uh, in terms of so, so solid phases when we talk about it is not a pure, pure A is pure A. Okay if you add anything it will be a new phase okay and that we have to define that in that phase what what 
constituents are there. Okay, so alpha phase you can see that the solubility of B is varying as a function of temperature. So, I can add more B atoms in A okay, at a higher temperature and as you go to lower temperatures the solubility of B in A is decreasing. Okay. So, that means B atoms would like to come out of the solution. Okay. So, now we want to have a composition C naught which is lower than the maximum solubility of B in alpha phase. Okay. So, I am starting with a liquid phase here. Okay. So, I have heated my material, I have gone to a temperature above which is given by the liquidus line here. So, my whole uh, whole system is in liquid phase right now okay. and from there I have started cooling down. Okay. So, you can understand that in between it will have as we saw in the isomorphous system suppose I draw a tie line here, you will have liquid and alpha phase. So, alpha phase will have composition given by uh, where this tie line is cutting the the solidus line and liquid composition will be given by the composition where the tie line is cutting the liquidus line okay. and you can also find out the fraction as we did earlier also. And when the composition uh, or when my uh, this cooling crosses the, the solidus line the whole uh, liquid is transformed into solid phase now okay. and now I am in the alpha phase region here. So, now I have a alpha phase throughout the solution okay. and alpha phase is a solid solution of B in A. Okay. So, uh, it is shown here that the, uh, the whole uh, volume is now solid phase which has alpha grains okay. and of course, there is boundary between these grains. Now, if we keep on cooling, okay, so the up to this point it is very similar to what we saw in isomorphous phase diagram okay, that you whole liquid transform to solid of one phase. Now, once I keep on cooling and my cooling crosses this solvus line, so this is a solvus line between the alpha phase and the alpha plus beta phase region. Okay. So, as soon as it crosses the solvus line. Now, you can understand that now B the solubility of B is, is going according to this curve here and my composition is more than that. Okay. So, you can understand for example, at this point if I draw a line here, okay, you can understand this is my composition of the alloy and my, my phase alpha phase can take only this much number uh, this much weight percent of B atom. Okay, though the overall composition is this much. So, this much amount of B atom has to come out of the system because my system cannot take this much B atoms. So, these B atoms okay, given by uh, you can say this uh, uh, let us say uh, let us call it some point let us say M n. Okay. So, the composition difference given by M n. Okay. That, that much amount of B atom has to come out of the system and how they will come out of the system? These B atoms if you see the next equilibrium phase which is there it is between the equilibrium and this region is between alpha phase and beta phase. So, these B atoms will not come out, uh, out as B atoms okay. they will come out as a beta phase that means a beta phase is beta phase is solid solution of A in B. So, here B is solvent and A is solute. So, B atoms will not come out as B atoms only, they will come out in form of a phase okay. and that will be given by that whatever is the equilibrium at that point. So, this, this is at this point at this temperature the equilibrium is between alpha phase and beta phase. So, all the B atoms will come out in form of beta phase and beta phase is uh, A also has some solubility in B here. So, this much solubility of A atoms is there in B you can consider that it may be around 6 percent or 7 percent of A can go in B. Okay. So, this B atom will come out in form of beta phase. Now, 
to form this beta phase okay you need a kind of a nucleation site okay and that nucleation site will be provided by the boundary between the alpha grains okay so all these beta atom the beta phase will nucleate at these boundaries so at point let us say I call this point as 2, the point 2 this is on all one single phase was there at point 3 there some beta phase some B atom wanted to come out and they came out in form of beta phase. So, you can understand that beta phase has more of B atom and less of A atoms and alpha phase has more of A atoms and less of B atoms. So, when B atoms are coming out they will all would like to come as beta phase because they can have more B atoms and some A atoms will be there okay, and that will kind of decorate this boundary here. So, this is the kind of microstructure you will say in case 1 okay, where composition is less than maximum solubility of B in alpha phase. Okay. Now, the next condition uh, of course, you please remember that we are talking here about equilibrium um, cooling only. Okay, so, we are uh, following the equilibrium phase diagram. Now, the composition between the maximum solubility of B in alpha phase and eutectic composition. Okay. So, it is between this point here and the eutectic composition here. Again, we are starting with a liquid phase, uh, let us call this as point 1. Okay. So, the whole uh, volume is liquid phase here and we are cooling. Okay. So, when the it crosses the liquidus line here, your alpha phase will start nucleating. Okay, so, at point 2 here you have a lot of alpha solid phase is there and some liquid is there which can be of course, again can be you can find out using tie line and using lever rule. Then you cross the point uh, from 2 to 3 just, just below the eutectic point here. Okay. So, what will happen when the you cross this from uh, a uh, uh, point just above the eutectic temperature to uh, just about below eutectic temperature. So, at this point you have some solid phase and some liquid. As soon as you cross this eutectic temperature, whatever liquid is there, okay, the all the liquid will transform to eutectic uh, mixture okay, and that is the alpha and beta phase in lamellar fashion. Okay. We have not uh, discussed this aspect, aspect till now, but right now let me uh, take it from me and then I will discuss that why it is so. Okay. So, eutectic is already we have discussed is an invariant point where the transformation takes place at a constant temperature. So, liquid will transform into solid okay, at a constant temperature. So, at point 3 or uh, at a point uh, just about the eutectic temperature suppose I suppose you take consider that point 2 is just about the eutectic temperature. So, let me draw a tie line here. Okay. So, this is this gives me the composition of alpha phase, this gives me the composition of liquid phase. This arm length divided by the total arm length will give me the fraction of alpha phase. This arm length divided by the total will give me the fraction of liquid phase. So, I have at least this much uh, fraction of this much fraction of liquid phase available, which as a, soon as I cross this uh, eutectic temperature that will transform into a uh, two phase uh, solid phases alpha and beta. So, initially I had only alpha phase which was nucleating as you is shown here with these two circles here okay. and as soon as this transformed from second to from a temperature above eutectic temperature to a low uh, temperature below low eutectic temperature all my liquid transformed into uh, some eutectic mixture which is the uh, alpha and beta mixture. Okay. And why we are getting alpha and beta? As you can see at point 3, if I draw a, a tie line, okay, you will get a, a composition of alpha like this and beta like this and the fraction of alpha and beta can also be, uh, can also be calculated. 
Now, alpha uh, this eutectic mixture which is the transformation is like that liquid transform into alpha and beta phases. Okay. So, there will be two alpha phases now, one when this transformation is taking place, another which is transforming before the eutectic reaction took place. Okay. So, to distinguish between these two alphas, the alpha which is transformed before the eutectic reaction is called primary alpha here okay. and the, uh, the alpha which is formed afterward is called eutectic alpha and of course eutectic beta okay that will come out of the uh, come out of the uh, that will form from the liquid phase okay if you go from th point 3 to point 4 okay you can see that my solubility of a in beta in a in b or solubility of a is varying like this so it is coming down okay similarly the solubility of B in alpha phase is also coming down. So, from alpha phase the beta precipitate should nucleate okay, as you go from point 3 to point 4. Okay. So, additionally this one more transformation will occur as I am going from point 3 to point 4. Okay. Now, let me also uh, explain that why you get this kind of alternate layers of alpha and beta. Okay, suppose you have a liquid phase here and some nucleation has taken place okay, and you are just crossing the eutectic point. Okay. So, what will happen that when you are crossing the eutectic point my liquid has to transform into both alpha and beta simultaneously. Okay. So, uh, uh, a very convenient way to do that is if I have both the alpha and beta layers close to each other. Okay. So, basically it is alpha and beta then you have another alpha and beta and so on. Okay. Okay. So, let us say this is my alpha the green one okay. and without any color is the beta. So, how it uh, this transformation takes place you get this alternate layers of alpha beta alpha beta and so on. Okay the liquid contains some overall composition okay of uh, some composition uh, which consists of both a and b atoms okay and now these a and b atoms have to be redistributed in alpha and beta phase you can see that alpha phase has lower amount of b atoms and beta phase has higher amount of b atoms so the, from these liquid atom b a atoms and b atoms have to be separated out in alpha phase and beta phase. So, the A atom should go preferentially here and B atom should go preferentially in beta phase. Okay. So, this redistribution has to take place in the liquid phase between the two phases okay. and this can happen only when you have both the phases coming very close to each other. So, that this redistribution between the of A atom going there, B atom going here okay, and this flow of A and B atom is taking place in the liquid phase between the two alpha and beta and that is how they are growing. Okay. So, for growth they need the alpha phase needs more of A atoms, beta phase needs more of B atoms for the growth. So, this redistribution takes place in the liquid phase and this takes place very easily if both the phases are coming very close to each other. Okay. And that is why when you have eutectic transformation where from liquid you get two fixed mixture at a constant temperature. Okay. So, this redistribution is easy okay, if you both the phases are coming together and that is why you can see that all the eutectic mixture is shown as lamellar microstructure here. Okay. And now, third is your eutectic composition of course. So, in this case if you have the overall composition which is uh, the, uh, given by your eutectic composition then from liquid phase okay, at a constant temperature the whole of the liquid phase will transform into the uh, solid phase which contains both alpha and beta phases in a lamellar fashion. Okay. So, these are lamellar eutectic microstructure. 
okay so i have already told you that why you should get these kind of lamellas okay because the redistribution of a and b atoms become easy between the this alternating uh, alpha and beta phases and that is how they grow okay and then there will be growth from some other direction then there will be growth from other third direction where they meet you will have some kind of boundary in between them okay uh, which which where they are uh, colliding with each other and they are stopping their growth okay so that kind of boundary will be there and that is how you get a complete eutectic mi microstructure in the uh, given volume of liquid okay so with that uh, thank you uh, we have discussed the uh, how the microstructure develop at different composition of a eutectic phase diagram under equilibrium condition okay and in non equilibrium condition you can add another factor in that that there will be lot of uh, composition variation in the microstructure thank you